If Sakuna replaced Muzan in Demon Slayer, everybody would be f- Oh, okay, my bad. Excuse my language. But at the end of the day, it's the truth. Sakuna is an absolute freakish monster. And he is nothing like the demons. And in all of the wrong ways. Muzan is very calculated. He understands certain things that he needs to do, certain ideas he needs to uphold, and on top of that, he knows that he can gather and build strength, and on top of that, gather a group of demons to conquer the Hashira, conquer the Demon Slayers. Now, this may seem kind of odd that I'm bringing this up, but the issue is, if you lumped in Sukuna exactly where Muzan is, well, Muzan wouldn't even do anything compared to Sukuna. Sukuna's strength, abilities, and everything else about him is off the charts. He is the king of curses for a reason. So, this is exactly what I believe would happen if Sukuna replaced Muzan in Demon Slayer. Muzan one day would be seeking out power. Fear would be instilled in him from the one and only demon slayer, the greatest demon slayer ever, Yorichi. And he would decide that he wants to hunt down something that would make him powerful. Yes, the, the spider lily is something he needs, and that would allow him to conquer the sun. But, but, he needs something even greater. He needs something that would allow him to gain even greater and more powerful strength. So that's exactly what he went hunting for. After gaining years and years, decades and decades, and centuries of centuries of knowledge, he would find that there was some sort of item, these fingers that if he consumes them, very similar to how he consumes humans, he would grow massively in strength and maybe even grow in strength the demons that surround him, all the demons that are under his control and under his whim. So eventually he would stumble across one of those said fingers, something like a cursed said object. He doesn't know much about them, but he's, he's heard from the grapevine and also from history itself that these fingers when consumed will give him the power he seeks. So he grabs the finger and inspects it looking at it very closely, and then eventually he would consume it. But once he would consume it, his body would rush with power, and his, and his facial structure and everything about him would change. Multiple eyes would appear underneath his normal eyes, and a new voice would replace the one of Muzan. Muzan would look around himself, the subconscious of himself that he is within at this moment, he looks around and eventually he would see a pile of skulls, bones, body parts, and his eyes would glance upward as he sees someone sitting on a throne. He introduces himself as Sukuna, the king of all curses, and now the king of all demons. And of course, Muzan would try his best to fight for control, but even a one-finger Sukuna is able to overtake Muzan. This is a power that is unknown to Sukuna. This is a power that nobody in this world even understands and knows. But the revival and the arrival of the one and only king of all curses, Sukuna, has now awakened even more than you could possibly imagine. Sukuna himself in his one finger state has now awakened this world's truest fears from those who fear something as simple as the dark, as the night sky, and for those who fear death itself as demons breathe down their necks. All of it begins to boil over, every last bit of it. Curses begin to arise out of nowhere. Curses begin to show up out of people's worst fears. Negative energy from villages to anything you could possibly think of. Even households, stable or unstable all alike, curses begin to arise. And it's all because of a single finger. But Sukuna... Sukuna that has now taken over the spot of the king of all demons is now searching for every last finger he needs. And on top of that, 
he is searching with the help and aid of the 12 Kizuki. These 12 top demons not only are helping search for the fingers that Sukuna so sought out that he needs so much so he can become utter perfection, but on top of that, those demons have now bonded with curses. Curses of ungodly proportions. Curses that were so weak compared to them, but then soon the fear that they drive, the, the negative energy they build, now rest within them. Now rest within a more powerful demon. From Kokushibo, to even someone like Akaza, to all the way down to the bottom, Rui. This makes everything so much more difficult for the Demon Slayers. Especially for our young Tanjiro. Tanjiro would go throughout life exactly how it once been. But this time around, Tanjiro would see that his family was dead for a totally different reason. His family would be devoured, mutilated, but one of them, just one, wouldn't be. But here's the thing, the young Nezuko being turned into a demon isn't the normal normal demon we've ever seen and this is the truly one of the first times we see it up close and so different nezuko attacking tanjiro nezuko grabbing and trying to kill her own brother succeeds and tomioka would appear to see the demon and the clash with nezuko would begin but this clash would be harder than ever before nezuko is very very strong and yes, Tomioka, to a certain extent, has gotten used to this power that has arisen, has gotten used to the power that is in front of them, but the Demon Slayers have not yet adapted. The Demon Slayers of this age are not ready. And this version of Nezuko may fall. This version of Nezuko may die at Tomioka's feet, but soon, all the Demon Slayers would realize that there is nothing they can do. Nothing they can do at all. Because the Demon Slayers, the Hashira, and every last one of them would slowly but surely trickle to their death. And it wouldn't take much time at all. Three, maybe six months? And every last one of those Demon Slayers, every last bit of them, the Hashira, all of them alike, would all die. Sukuna would build up a force an army of some sorts, and it's something that he didn't even have to do himself. Finger after finger, he gathers each one, and his power continues to climb. But as his power builds, and as strength of curses continue to accelerate, soon, soon, very soon, people will begin to awaken, people will be born with powers to combat the powers that are in front of them. Maybe, just maybe, there's hope for the future generations. But for those that we love so much, people like Zenitsu, Onosuke, if they arrive at Natagomo Mountain, everything will die. Every battle they take on in the forest where Rui awaits with his family is so much more difficult. And every last fight would go down to the skin of their teeth. And even the Hashira who would come and help and try their best to stop Rui would struggle. Because Rui even has a cursed spirit or some sort of cursed like energy surrounding and helping him. They are hybrids. They have accelerated the process of what demonhood truly is. And this, this version of every single person, the version that we all know from Tomioka to Shinobu to Kanao to very, very, very strong Hashira, well, none of them can stand up. None of them have the ability or the strength to combat these demons. There's just no way for this generation of demon slayers to come out successful. But 
Even with that said, soon these demons will get the challenge they so sought after. Because Sukuna, the one that has taken over now this world with the help of everlasting immortality that surrounds him, Sukuna still seeks for a fight, still sought after one thing, a challenge of, of the strongest, a challenge amongst some of the strongest beings ever. The demons that are next to him, the ones that bend their head at his will, are nothing, nothing to him. He challenges them, telling them they can have the throne if they even land a finger on him, ironically enough. But no, none of them, not a single one of them, comes close. Not a single one of them could lay a finger on Sukuna. And once Sukuna gains even more of his strength back, every single finger he gains, and eventually to his very, very powerful strength, if he gets to that point, maybe even the next, or maybe even the one after that, every single generation, the next and the next and the next, they might not even be strong enough to take down someone like Sukuna. Someone like the king of all curses. But now, the king of all curses and demons. Like I said before, if Sukuna replaced Muzan in Demon Slayer, every last Demon Slayer, every last person would be screwed. Horribly screwed. But there's only hope in the future. Only hope in what can truly come out of the new generation. And then the one after that. And then the one after that. At this point, the people on this planet the people who live with demons, demons that hunt day in and day out, well, they could only pray. Pray that the next generation of demon slayers, but also demon slayer sorcerers, would come and save them. But for now, demon slayer itself would be in utter chaos and the world that surrounds them would be dominated by Sukuna, the king of all curses and demons. But with that said, that's what I believe what would have happened if Sukuna replaced Muzan in Demon Slayer. What do you think would have happened? What do you think would go on in this story of if Sukuna replaced Muzan, the king of all demons? Let me know in the comment section below. And I hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment down below, all that good stuff. Make sure to do all that stuff. I can see all the support and I appreciate it all. And yeah, that's all I got to say. I hope you all enjoyed the video. And I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later.